The best credit cards for beginners. If you're new to credit cards or you're looking for an upgrade, you know that navigating through the maze of offers and terminology, it's an absolute mess. So I looked at more than 40 different credit cards and picked the top five based on things like fees, offers, your ability to get approved easily, because I know that can be a problem, and cash back bonuses. I mean, if you're gonna spend money, you might as well be rewarded for it. So this list is going to have you covered, If even if you've never had a credit card before, or if you're just looking for a new one with some good benefits because the benefits are constantly changing on these cards. And if you're a business owner, stay till the end because I've included a great card option for business owners that not many people are talking about and has a pretty awesome benefit. Also, each card I talk about will be linked down in the description of this video. That way, if you're interested, you can just go ahead and click that and easy access. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump right in. The first card is the Discover It Secured Card. Now this is by far the most recommended card for absolute beginners. This one is constantly topping all the charts and for a good reason. What makes this one so good for beginners is it's secured, which means anyone can get this no matter your credit score, even if you have a zero credit score or a terrible credit score. And there are benefits tied to it, which is rare for this type of card. So what does it mean to be secured? With a secured card, you pay a deposit upfront in the amount of your desired card limit. So if you want your limit to be $500, you have to deposit $500 into the card. And that might sound bad, but it's actually a good thing for newbies because with the traditional credit card, you have to apply and number one, hope you get approved. And then number two, hope that you get a decent credit limit, which is like impossible to do if you have never had a credit card before or if you have a bad credit history. So both of those things are just a complete pain when you're a beginner with no credit history. And the problem is in order to build credit, you need to have credit and access to credit. So it's like, it's like if you were to go to go to see a movie and the movie theater out front is like, no, you, you can't come in. We only let people watch this movie who've already seen the movie. It's like, well, how am I supposed to do this if, if I can't do it in the first place? And that's why, that's why secured cards are so great because it lets you guarantee your approval and then start building your credit. Now, obviously this isn't a great option if the only reason you want a credit card is to spend money that you don't have because of that necessary deposit, which you shouldn't do anyways, but this is for someone who's just trying to be smart and looking to build their credit. It's a perfect option to guarantee your first card, build your credit for like six to 12 months, and then you can either up your credit limit or apply for an even better card. Now, what I like about the Discover It Secured card specifically is it even has some decent rewards that are comparable to normal credit cards, which is rare for a secured card. So here are some of the benefits. You get 2% cash back on gas stations and restaurants. You get 1% cash back everywhere else, and there are no annual fees. Now, a lot of credit card companies treat secured card like they're doing you a favor, like it's like, like some kind of service and they charge a fee because of that. The Discover It card does not do that just another reason why it's a good option for people with no credit and they double their cash back in your first year but to a limit and this is really the only downside with the card because that double reward is capped at one thousand dollars spent per year but it's still nice to have that for your first card so if you have no credit history or bad credit history this is definitely the first step before moving on to other cards in the list the apr rate for this one is 2.99 percent variable and as a side note here i'm going to give the interest rates but that does not mean that I condone leaving a balance on any of these cards because interest rates on all credit cards are borderline robbery. It's terrible. You should never leave a balance if at all possible on a credit card. Now the next card we're going to talk about is the Apple credit card. Now this is a fairly new one as it's only been out for under like two years but as we all know when Apple does something they have to make it kind of new and unique to everything else. So unlike the Discover card this is just a normal credit card. You're not guaranteed approval. Your approval odds are based based on several factors, but it seems that a favorable credit score for this card is 650 and up. Now, before we talk about what it has to offer, it's worth mentioning that this really is only a good option if you own an iPhone or at least one Apple device that supports the interface. It's possible to get an Apple credit card without one, but the major benefits of this card 
they're not really worth it without an iPhone, if we're, if we're being honest. So if you don't have an iPhone, one of the other cards on this list is definitely a better option. So the benefits with this card is first off, an amazing user interface. Apple's known for their sleek operating systems and applications. So of course, th they have a great interface. Second, we have 2% cash back on all Apple Pay transactions. So when you apply on your iPhone, the card is automatically added to your wallet, and then you get that 2% cash back on those purchases. So if you do a lot of online shopping on your phone and you pay with Apple Pay, or if the stores you regularly visit use and support Apple Pay, then this is a huge plus. And then you get 1% cash back on all other transactions, which is fairly standard with most cards. And you get 3% cash back on all Apple products. So it's an extra 1%. It's kind of, kind of underwhelming, especially if you consider the fact that you really don't buy Apple products that often, and they could, they could have done more than 3%. And honestly, if you are buying a lot of Apple products, you probably already know about the Apple card and you're, you're already using it. So I don't know, it's, it's worth mentioning, but it's not you know a huge benefit. Also, this card looks cool. It's a titanium card with no numbers on it. And it's by far the most clean looking card that doesn't have like a huge annual fee. There's no annual fee. The downsides with this card is if you don't use Apple Pay or have an iPhone, there's like 200 cars that are better than this one, but if you use Apple Pay, then it's a pretty awesome option. And the only other downside I found is that Apple's a little bit stingy about budgeting apps like Mint and connecting to this card. It's hard to link the card to any budgeting applications, which can be a pain if you're trying to manage your finances with one of those apps. So if you're a lover of Apple, you know, the company, not the fruit, or both, I guess, then this is an awesome option for you. If not, check out one of the other options on this list. The APR here is between 10.99% and 21.99% variable. The third card on my list is the Chase Freedom Flex card. Now, this is the most normal credit card on the list. You know, we had the Discover It credit card that was great for the newest of newbies. The Apple credit card is great if you have an iPhone. And the next two are fairly broad and a good option for most people if you have a moderate or good credit history. So the benefits of this card are 1% cash back on all transactions, fairly standard, but then you get 5% cash back on rotating categories. So, well, like I said, that 1% is fairly standard. These rotating categories are really nice because although they change every year, they're categories that you typically would already spend money on. And this is huge because a lot of times credit cards, they'll say like, you know, these huge percent cash backs, but it's on things like, you know, I might spend $50 on that a year. So it doesn't really matter. So it's a rotating uh, criteria for 5% cash back. Now it's going to change in the future what the categories are. But last year in quarter one, it was streaming services, internet, cable, phone services, and gas stations. Quarter two, it was streaming services again, gyms and grocery stores. Quarter three was Amazon and Whole Foods and quarter four was Walmart and PayPal. So they're pretty broad things that you likely are already spending money on, except you don't know what the 5% is gonna be until you know it actually happens. Also with this card, there's no annual fee, which is awesome, and a $200 sign-up bonus, which is not very common in these more beginner-friendly type cards. So it's an awesome option. Now, the, really the only downside with this card is a 3% foreign transaction fee. So if you're doing foreign transactions, it's probably not the best card for you. Now it's important to note here that the downsides on any of these cards can completely be negated if you just pair more than one card and use that card in the situation that you know best best suits you. So let me give an example. Let's say you had both the Apple credit card and this Freedom Flex card. You'd be paying no foreign transaction fees if you just use the Apple card on those. And you'd be getting 2% or 5% almost all the time if you know you just use the Apple card. If there was Apple Pay and it was a rot rotating category, you get the 5% with the Flex card. And this is true for most cards that have rotating categories or just potential you know, big upsides and big downsides. You can just pair it with a different card, keep track of what's going on, and you can maximize your benefit just by you know, kind of keeping your eyes peeled on the various offers. And with the Freedom Flex card, the APR is between 14.99% and 23.74% variable. The fourth card on the list is the Pedal One Visa credit card. This card is similar to the Apple card in that it has zero fees and a great user interface, although it's pretty unique in its approval process. So with so many people who are new to credit and they just get screwed by the auto denial and just the systems in place that you know determine, hey, should this person get a credit card or not? This one kind of does away with that. So this card looks at everything, including your income, your spending, your bank statements, your credit, your credit history, your cash, savings, debt, everything gets built in this financial picture and you get a credit card and limit that suits your individual situation. And you're not just gonna be auto rejected by some algorithm that 
who knows even how it works. Now, the other benefits with this card is there's no fees whatsoever, including annual fees. Get 1% cash back with the potential to up that to 1.5% with on-time payments. And you get between 2 and 10% cash back on rotating offers, again, with this one. Now, the rotating offers here aren't nearly as good as that last card, as the, as the Chase card's rotating 5%. That one covered way more places, but it's still a good bonus. And the mobile interface for this app is amazing. Looking at the reviews, the user interface is one of the easiest to use out there right now. Now, the downside with this card is, although it's a very well-rounded card, it has one little kink. They don't accept applications for credit increases. So whatever you get, that's what you get. There's no fighting back, but the approval process is a little bit smarter, if you will. The APR here is between 19.99% and 29.49% variable. And then fifth and finally, we have the Brex credit card. This is the card for business owners. And as I say business owners, it's not necessarily small business owners for a reason, or not the smallest of small business owners. That's because there's a fairly hefty cash requirement in order to get this card, but just hang on because there's a big, big, benefit here. The, the issue with our credit system nowadays is it doesn't look at all the practical reasons for approving someone, especially when it comes to a business. If you're a small business owner, you know it's extremely hard to get anything credit-wise with your business unless your business is very established, multiple years old, and you have other credit history. It's, it's very hard to do anything credit-wise with your business. Now, this is where the Brex card steps in. It looks at your business's cash balance, spending pattern, investors, anything that could determine the future value of your business, and then determines your credit limit based off of that. So if your business is booming and you need a booming credit line, they got you covered. This is the card for you. Now, the major benefit here is there's no personal guarantee. So while this card is great for businesses with no credit history, there are actually plenty of options in that space, but the Brex card completely sets itself apart having that no personal guarantee. So this means if your business goes under, you are not personally liable, which is huge as a starting out small business owners. So they're not gonna show up at your front door and ask for your house, your car, or your firstborn as repayment. And also there is no annual fee, which is just an awesome plus here. Now the downsides with this card is, it's a bit of a, actually kind of a big downside. Like I mentioned, this isn't for the smallest of small businesses because you need $100,000 in the bank to apply for the card. Now there's no APR with this card because it's a charge card and you just need to pay it off in full at the end of each billing cycle. And that's gonna do it. If you're looking for a beginner card for yourself, or for your business, one of these should have you covered. It doesn't hurt to apply. So the links for all these cards will be listed in the description for easy access if, you, if one stands up for you or if you're trying to do that pairing technique. And that's gonna do it for today. Make sure you like this video if you found it helpful. Share it if you found it helpful. Subscribe for more content like this, content that makes you money and saves you money. And I would just like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.